Hello, my name is Christine Sullivan. I'm from BSN Medical and I'm a certified wound care nurse and a certified foot care nurse. Today we're going to discuss chronic venous disease, including chronic venous insufficiency and the etiology of venous leg ulcers. We'll also discuss compression bandages used to treat venous leg ulcers. First, let's start with anatomy and physiology of the vascular system. Anatomy and physiology of the vascular system begins with the heart. The heart pumps blood into the arteries and arterioles. It carries blood away from the heart and it's exchanged in the capillaries. The capillaries bring blood to the veins and venules and it returns back to the heart. The venous system components are comprised of superficial system veins, deep system veins, and perforators or connectors that connect the two. What influences venous return are the heart pump, the respiratory pump, the valves in the veins, the tone of the venous system, and also the calf muscle pump. Valves control the blood flow in veins. They open to allow blood to return to the heart, and they close to prevent blood from flowing backwards. The calf muscle pump function as the peripheral heart. When it contracts, it propels blood toward the heart. When it relaxes, it draws blood from the veins. What happens with chronic venous insufficiency is the valves are weak or damaged and they close poorly, allowing backflow of blood into the veins. When the valve is open, blood can flow. When it's closed, blood cannot flow back to the heart. When the valve is insufficient, it causes a venous reflux. Results of venous reflux are pooling of blood into the tissue in the veins, enlarging the veins, and possibly causing blood clots. Venous insufficiency causes peripheral tissue breakdown. When the blood pools in the legs, due to inability of the venous system to carry it away, the tissue is deprived of oxygenated blood. This is what causes a venous leg ulcer. The treatment goals for venous leg ulcers are to reduce pressure in the superficial venous system. It aids in venous return to the heart by increasing velocity of flow in the deep veins, reducing edema by decreasing the pressure between the capillaries and the tissue. There are different compression therapy options, including four-layer elastic compression or multi-layer bandaging, inelastic or short stretch bandages, two-layer compression kits, and medical leg wear to prevent reoccurring and maintenance when edema is present. Studies show if this level of compression can be maintained, the leg ulcer can heal within 12 to 15 weeks. Indications for compression with an active venous leg ulcer is chronic venous insufficiency, including venous ulceration. Different levels of compression can be utilized for edema, prevention of DVT, prevention of progression or exasperation of venous conditions, prevention of post-thrombotic syndrome, and varicosities. Contraindications are arterial disease or ischemia, uncontrolled congestive heart failure or renal failure, untreated septic phlebitis, or large blood clots in the large vessels. Clinicians will use an assessment tool called the ankle brachial pressure index. This is to assess the amount of arterial disease that the patient may have. The pressure values of the ankle and the arm are measured by using a blood pressure cuff and a Doppler probe. The result of the arterial pressure difference between the ankle and the arm indicates the ankle brachial pressure index. The amount of compression is determined by the patient's ankle brachial index. If a patient has an ankle brachial index of 0.8 or greater, there's minimal arterial disease. If they have an ankle brachial index of 0.6 to 0.8, the patient has a mixed disease between arterial and venous and need a lighter compression. If their ABI is below 0.6, then they have arterial disease and would not be a candidate for compression. The principles of compression are resting pressure and working pressure. Resting pressure is a continuous force exerted from outside toward the tissue. The pressure depends on the fabric of the bandage or garment. An inelastic bandage applied with stretch, long stretch, or most compression stockings work this way. Working pressure, the muscles inside work against the compression device, 
All rigid and elastic compression devices provide working pressure. An inelastic bandage applied with little or no stretch, short stretch, are very stiff and work by working pressure. Bandage groups are in two stretch groups, short stretch and long stretch. Short stretch can be stretched up to 90%. It has a high working pressure and a low resting pressure. It supports the muscle pump function and can be used for venous disease as well as lymphology treatment. Long stretch can be stretched more than 100%. It has a low working pressure and a high resting pressure. This exerts pressure through the elastic yarns of the garment. This also supports the muscle pump, but is not indicated for lymphology treatment. BSN provides an integrated approach to managing chronic venous insufficiency and venous leg ulcers. BSN offers a full portfolio of compression products to assist you in meeting your patient's individual needs. Please visit the BSN Medical website to get more information about the products. Thank you for watching today.